This is code.org. We are making a library. So this gets complicated fast. Thankfully, we've seen a bunch of examples. Let's take a look at some of those. So here's an application, and we're not going to build out an application yet, right? We're just building a library. Let me hit reset, run, and oh, Oklahoma. Guess the state. I bet it's Oklahoma. Ohio. <laughs> nope. All right, new state. Nope, that's not it. So on and so forth. So where's the library? Well, this is the applications code, but the library is what's contained within here, managed libraries. And this is a thing in real world coding because you're doing real world coding. So if I look at this, what does this library do? It's like, um, it's imported code, right? It's someone else's program. These functions just sit here and we can use them like, hey, I want a state abbreviation. Hey, I really need to get this state skyline picture or state seal. And here's the code that will do that, right? And what this code does is it's making use of the data tables that code.org provides. But this is how the real libraries function. And then when I write a program, an app, I import a library. I use this library that someone's designed for state pictures because I don't want to make a whole program around getting state pictures. It's common enough that someone else built this for us and we can use it. And that's often the case in programming. So now I have a library. And where do we use the library here? Well, look, state library dot random state. What's that? It's the function, not in assets, in here. So right now we're going to build out a library, which is this, something aimed at a specific goal. Now, my example of this is going to be focused on breakfast cereals. You should have this paper. It is really handy, right? The planning guide. If you're my student, you did. You picked it up when you came in. But this is helpful. This gives you an idea of what you're going to want to need, such as trimming strings, capitalizing them, removing letters. I've started filling mine out to give you an idea of how to use it. For instance, I'm going to have a serial library. I want to be able to provide a random index to someone because that way they can use a random index from the library to then get a, get a uh, name of a serial, get an image of that serial and other types of content right i want them to almost be able to use it like the guess a state library can be used except maybe guess a serial's calories or something because most of the pictures have the serial name in them but that's my idea that's what i'm basing it off of and it's good to have that foundation so now looking at the code and knowing that i want to start off with a function that will return a random index of the serial for the serial database i could also have it return a serial's name that would also work i would find that a bit redundant uh because then we would also have to use that to then go find other parts so instead just returning the index location of a serial would be most helpful i believe and i can show you what i mean so let's just dive in now i'm gonna do whoops reset run there we are. And I'm going to throw a function down right here. Now, of course, you're screaming because you're like, what about your comments before? I'll put this here so I don't forget, but I want to get started. So my first one was get random index. And this I want to provide a random index within the range of what the serial data set allows. So I'm going to click on data because I do need to import that to be testing this all out. And let's see, it was under science, I believe. And yep, serial nutrition import. There we are. And I can click to view so you can get an idea. Now, I want the I'm going to get the name column first into a list. So here inside this function, and you do want to contain all of your stuff inside of functions, you wouldn't want a variable outside of, at the top here because this is a library. You want the variable to be created only when the specific function is called or method by someone using the library. All right, so my variable here is gonna be, um, I'm gonna call it name list. And what will it be? It will be the serials. Well, how do I do that? I head over to data. I need to get get column, okay. get column of, well, let me do choose serial nutrition. And then what column would I like to access? Choose, and I'll go ahead and do the name. The, the IDs is one off, right? Because the index is zero. So the ID is actually one off of the index because index starts counting at zero. Okay, so variable, and here, what, are, what am I doing? I get the entire uh, list of names. Now, I'm not going to make use of the names at the moment. I just need to know how long the list is because i got to return an index that is of an appropriate length. I don't want to return index 1,000 if there's eight things in the list.
So I'm going to now do var index, and index is going to be equal to a random number starting at zero, because I know indices or index start at zero, and it's going to go to name list dot length minus one. This minus one is critical because dot length tells you how many items are in your list. So say you have three things, right? You have three things in a list. I don't know, apple, orange, and unicorns in a list. So your length is three. Well, what indexes do you have? Well, you have index zero for apple, one for orange. I almost forgot what it was. <laughs> Two for unicorn. And if length is three, that would hurt you because you can't have a three as an index. That's why we do get length minus one. And so it's always up to date and will never be too large. Now what we would need to do is return. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Where do they put the return statement? Is it in functions? That would make sense. And I'll return index. Now, if you think this is unneeded, you could just do random number right here and directly return it. I think it helps provide clarity what this number will be used for. So I'm going to leave it as is. And I now have a return. So I want to make sure to be writing in some of this data, some of this information. So I just said index within the serial data sheet, or I could just say data, I guess. What I'm saying is, well, an index within it. That's somewhat of an abbreviated statement, but you get the idea. All right, now, what else did I want? Well, I wanted to do a serial name, right? So now that they we've provided them an index, what if they would like to get the serial name? Same deal. And now it's easy, but they need to give us a parameter. They would need to give us an index. So function get name, and then this is going to be, oh, I don't need to say bar. I'm going to say index. So I need to know what serial they're looking for here. Get name index. And then once we have that index, we can say, and I'll again use a variable. It's not entirely necessary. Well, this one is. We need to create the list because, again, we're only using the list. We only create the list each time a function runs. You do not create it at the top. So if we need to get the name, I'm going to get a name list, same as this. I'm going to grab that column. I'm going to, you can't create stuff at the top because you can't have it sitting around. The stuff only exists in the moment that someone else calls the library. It's not just sitting there going. All right. So now I have a list of names. And then what do I want to do? Well, you can do variable name is equal to what did I name list? And then what's the index, right? I need to put the index. Well, the index is the thing we passed up here. Okay. Now I can return whatever the name is. So I'm going to go to return and do name. Keep in mind, if you wanted to, you could just return this too directly to give them the name. It also makes code more readable to use for libraries because anyone could take a look at a library and understand, oh, you got the index of a serial. Oh, you're getting its name now. All right. Now, what else do I need? I wanted to get the picture as well. And that's going to look very similar to this. So much so that I am going to do, I'm going to highlight all this. I'm going to do copy, enter, right click, and paste. Get image. And then what do I want? Okay, get image. Is that reserved? I might say get serial image just in case. And then I need the index, serial nutrition. That's still the name. But what do I want for a list? I don't want the name. I want the image. So box image. And we'll say, I'm going to call this list pictures. Okay. And then when I use index here, right? Index, what will this be? I'll just say uh, I need it here. I'm going to say all pictures to make it clear. And then this will be picture. That means this will be picture. And this needs to be all pictures. Let me show you what I mean. All right. So what we just did here is, oh, I hate that it's hard to read. What we just did then is all pictures is equal to, hey, go get the column, serial nutrition, get the name column. Oh. 
and see that's not what I wanted. Why didn't that change for us? We need the box image. Hmm, it's being grumpy. We know what we want. We need the box image, and then we with the box image with all those pictures, with the list of pictures, I'm going to use the index that's passed assign it to picture and return picture. And again, I could do this and that would do the same thing. I think the way I did it makes it more clear. All right. So we got a picture, we got that. I also want, so I want more of these. I want this for calories as well. Um, except I'm gonna have for check calories, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have a check calorie function, which is just gonna check if the person has the correct calories. So, yep, um, let's do function check calories, okay? And then I actually need a parameter here, and this will be guess. So the user's guess. Now, how will I do this? I need a new list, var um, all calories, I guess. And then I need to hit grab data and our table again, choose. Serial, choose uh, calories. And that one actually did it. So now I have calories here. We're getting a whole column of all the calories in the list, right? And then what am I going to do? Well, when the user runs this function, they have to put in a number here. So now I'm going to check if that number is equal to the item in the list. So I'm going to do there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to make a Boolean variable, right? So I'm going to say var correct is equal to false. So var correct will be equal to false. And to check the calories, I'm going to go to control and if. So I'm going to say if uh, guess, right, is equal equal is equal to all calories. Oh, I need new two parameters. Because I need to know the index. What what box are you talking about here? So if the guess is equal to all calories index, which will give us the box. So, so if the guess is equal to all calories index, so then we use this number to know which box that's currently on their screen. Then we use this number, they submit their guess, and we check if the guess is equal to all the calories index. So the calorie list and the index at which the serial is at. If that is equal, well, I have this great variable up here, correct. And I'm going to say correct is equal to true. And then I'm going to return correct. So if it's not true, if these if their guess is not equal to the correct amount of calories, correct would stay false and we would return false. Now, we could also do it this way. And I always wonder if I should go through. Yeah, so we could also return false right here. Just the word false would do the same thing. And I could then also inside of here return true. I think this might be a bit more advanced. The reason this works is because if it's true, it returns true and it's done with a function. Once you hit return, you don't run anything more in the function. You just go back to where you were. I'm going to leave it as is because I think that is more usable right now. So check calories. Cool. And this yellow stuff is fine. It's saying you haven't used it or I have a misspelling. Where did I spell calorites? Oh, okay. So maybe that yellow stuff isn't fine for me. Yikes. <laughs> This stuff just means we haven't used it yet, which makes sense for a library. So there is one other thing I'm going to add, and that is I want a function that will check if any item has that many calories. So if they get it wrong, I'm thinking we could check or the person using my library might want to see if any item has that many calories. So um, check. Let's actually all calories check. Sure. All calories check. And then the parameter here will be the amount of calories. So I'll just say the guess again. All right. I'm going to do the same thing. Mm, 
Well, let's first do a for loop, because if we're going through an entire list, I need a for loop. Well, actually, first, I need my list. So var blank, var what? Well, I said, let's do all calories. And so then we need to get the data, get the column. What column? The calorie column. The calorie column. Serial calories. All right. And now I want to loop through the entire list. Well, I don't know how many serials in that list, and I'm not going to count. But what's great is we don't need to. We have this list, and I can just say, hey, I must be less than all calories dot length. And that will make sure that I start at a at zero, which is great because index of zero is where we always start. So index zero in my list would be 70 because that's index zero ID one. Index one is also 70 because that's where it is. Um, so we'll start at zero. We'll go all the way up to one less than the length of the list, which is the last index. What am I doing during this time? I am checking if any of these have that many calories. So if guess is equal equal to the all calories uh, i, right, that current index. So if these are equal, then yeah, that serial has that many calories. And I want to use a variable, I'll call it count. Count is going to be equal to zero here. But as we go up, I could do count equals count plus one. But keep in mind, the faster way that programmers use of doing count equals count plus one is just count plus plus. So I'm counting how many other serials, I guess, all calories check. So I'm counting how many serials have that many calories. Okay. So I could call it calorie count, but it wouldn't really, yeah. All calorie check. Okay, so now what do I want to do? Well, I want to return count, actually. So that way they'll know, oh, yeah, nothing has that many calories. Or there's a ton of things that have it. So I'll return count. And now we can loop through. They'll give us a guess, and we can tell them if any zero on the list has that many calories. Cool. I'm really excited about our library and what we're going to continue to do with it, because we will be continuing to build.